welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, today I'm taking back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 28th of November 1565, Member of Parliament and political agent Francis Yaxley set sail for Scotland from Antwerp. Unfortunately, he never reached Scotland. He drowned when his ship foundered off the coast of Northumberland. Yaxley was not all that was lost in this shipwreck. Yaxley was carrying 20,000 crowns, gold crowns. But why? Who was it for? Who was Yaxley? And what happened to the gold? Well, let me tell you a bit more about this Englishman and the gold that he was carrying to Scotland. Francis Yaxley was the eldest son of Richard Yaxley of Mellis in Suffolk and his wife Anne Austen. The family seat was Yaxley Hall. Nothing is known of Yaxley's early life, but he was married to Margaret Hastings, daughter of Sir Henry Hastings of Braunston in Leicestershire. It is thought that he owed his introduction to court in 1547, when he started working for the Privy Council, to the patronage of William Sissel, the future Baron Burley. Yaxley also served as a Member of Parliament for Dunwich in 1553, then Stamford in 1555 and Saltash in 1558. In the early 1550s, Yaxley worked as a junior diplomat and he also entered Gray's Inn, one of London's inns of the court. Catholic Yaxley's English court career came to a bit of a halt when Queen Elizabeth I came to the throne in 1558 and he ended up spending time in prison in 1561 for airing his views on a marriage between Robert Dudley and the Queen. He was back in prison in 1562 after being involved with Margaret Douglas, Countess of Lennox, in plans to arrange a marriage between her son, Henry Stuart Lord Darnley, and Mary, Queen of Scots. By July 1565, Yaxley was out of prison and was on his way to Flanders. He wasn't there long, but on the 20th of August, he set sail for Scotland. He arrived there safely on the 25th of August, having come close to being intercepted by an English man of war, which had been in pursuit. On his arrival, he was made secretary to Lord Darnley, who'd married Mary, Queen of Scots the previous month. He was now working for Scotland, and on the 16th of September 1565, he set sail for Spain, having been appointed by Mary, Queen of Scots as her ambassador at the Spanish court. He arrived at Segovia just over a month later. His mission was to get Philip II to intercede with Elizabeth I to get the Countess of Lennox released from the Tower, to get Philip to persuade Elizabeth not to support Mary's enemies, and to get him to help, both financially and with manpower, the removal of rebels and heretics supported by the English government from Scotland. Although Philip wouldn't intercede with Elizabeth, he was willing to support Mary financially. He arranged for Yaxley to pick up 20,000 crowns in Brussels from his factor, Alonso del Canto. On the 10th of November, Spanish diplomat Guzman de Silva wrote to Philip of Spain from Brussels, telling him of Yaxley's arrival the previous night. He went on to say that Yaxley had immediately set off for Antwerp, followed by Alonso del Canto, who will send him off with all needful secrecy and speed, and also with a cipher, which would allow him to communicate with de Silva on Scottish matters. Yaxley set sail from Antwerp on this day in history, the 28th of November, 1565. But although de Silva reported how Del Canto told him that Yaxley had embarked in good weather, the weather soon changed. Unfortunately, a storm caused Yaxley's ship to be wrecked off the coast of Northumberland. Yaxley was drowned and his body was washed up on Holy Island. But what about the gold crowns? Well, on the 28th of January 1566, de Silva, who just arrived in London, reported to Philip, the description given of the man who was found drowned confirms my suspicion, but not as to the finding of the money in the box, as he did not carry one, but only some bundles of blankets for greater secrecy, as I'm informed by Alonso del Canto. Then, on the 4th of February, 1566, 
De Silva wrote, The wreck and loss of Francis Yaxley is further confirmed, whereat I am greatly grieved as there is no mention of papers or anything. Finally, on the 29th of April 1566, De Silva reported that the Earl of Northumberland had had a dispute with the Admiral, presumably Edward Clinton, Lord High Admiral, respecting the money which was found in the sea at his port and which they say was the money taken by Yaxley, the Queen of Scotland's man. So the gold had been found and seized by Elizabeth's treasury. De Silva did go on to say, though, that it is thought the money will be returned to the Queen of Scotland. I'm not sure whether it was, though. Yaxley's body was transported to Suffolk, where he was buried at Yaxley. He died childless and left his lands in Suffolk to his father, Richard. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a man who started his career helped by his father in Henry VIII's reign, who was a staunch supporter of Mary I, but managed to do well under Elizabeth I, leaving his grandson a fortune. Do make sure you're subscribed, you can click right there, and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 28th of November 1499, Edward Plantagenet, styled Earl of Warwick, was executed by beheading on Tower Hill. Warwick was a potential claimant to the throne, being the son of George, Duke of Clarence, brother of Kings Edward IV and Richard III. But it was his involvement in a plot by pretender Perkin Warbeck that was his final undoing. You can find out more about his short and sad life, much of it spent in prison, in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do leave a comment if you wish, and please consider giving me a like as well. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.